Hey, remember the 90s? Remember when smoking wasn't just socially acceptable, but was shown to be cool in movies? Well, do I have a video essay for you? Waterworld, 1995 Kevin Costner epic, has a very interesting take. The film, set 500 some odd years in the future, shows the Earth flooded by water after a catastrophic event has melted all the polar ice caps. When watching that film, one thing really stood out in my mind. When we're introduced to the people known as the Smokers, a nomadic people who raid others for supplies and the like. These people are called smokers because not only are they the few people left that still have access to gasoline, but are literally smokers. Which brings me to the thesis of this video. Unlike the opening scene of this movie, where Kevin Costner re-drinks his own piss, you can't re-smoke a cigarette. So somehow this nomadic tribe of smoking sea raiders has enough of a stockpile of cigarettes to be comfortably smoking 500 years into the future. Let's figure out how much that would be. So in 2005, the average smoker in the United States smoked roughly 17 cigarettes a day. So for the sake of making math easier, let's go back to the 90s number and say they smoked 20 cigarettes a day. And to make it easier, most packs are roughly 20 cigarettes. So for the average smoker to be able to keep their current habit for a year, they would need 7,300 cigarettes, which is roughly 365 packs a year. So the smokers are a dystopian nomadic culture that have access to oil via the Exxon Valdez, an oil tanker famously responsible for a giant oil spill in Alaska in 1989. So for the last 500 years, the smokers have been using the crude from the tanker and using that to power their aquatic adventures. So my thought becomes the Exxon Valdez has to be the ultimate prepper ship, with massive amounts of supplies loaded on the ship to maintain their current standard of living. So just how many cigarettes would they have needed to last 500 years? So for one person to smoke at average a rate of 20 cigarettes per day for 500 years, they would need 3,650,000 cigarettes, or 182,500 packs. Which, let's factor in a rough cost estimate on the number of packs as well. Let's say they bought the packs at the cheapest rate as of 2021. The state of Missouri sells cigarettes at $4.91 a pack, which roughly equates to $896,000 worth of tobacco. Let's take this a step further. The film shows the smokers as a somewhat large clan of people. So let's do an estimate. The smokers are somewhere around 500 people for the majority of time. So with that, we can estimate that smokers would have needed 91,250,000 packs of cigarettes to get them where they were when the tanker explodes. That many cigarettes is roughly 372,300 cubic feet at a weight of 1,254 tons of cigarettes, which equals out to roughly 137 40-foot cargo containers at a cost of $448 million. This is a rough estimate, we can't really have 100% accuracy because we don't know the average lifespan of a smoker or how often they really got their cigarettes, but this is a rough estimate to get them to where they were when their civilization ultimately exploded glamorously. We do know that the smoker has smoked enough to have improvised oxygen supplies randomly about, but that could have been a mixture of their living so close to crude oil and the sheer number of cigarettes they had access to. So there's a number of health factors there that add to this estimate as well. Is it possible for them to have that many cigarettes? With the massive amount of cigarettes we saw the smokers having and handing out at different points in the film, it's possible to say the smokers at some point captured a large cargo ship that happened to be transporting Connexes full of cigarettes, with given the sheer amount of Connexes a single cargo ship can transport somewhere between 20 to 25,000, it's very possible. And based on the number of cargo containers on the deck of the Exxon Valdez when we're shown in those scenes, it's very possible the ship had Connexes on there already. And other shots showing they had Spam, which I really don't know if Spam would last 500 years in the can, but who knows? But that just leads to a deeper theory that the smokers at some point were a larger fleet of nomadic peoples going around and slowly living off the massive number of cargo containers they had readily available until at some point their fleet began to degrade. But when all said and done, something I discovered about Waterworld is that the film is actually a much deeper affair than I remembered. 
The film had an amazing atmosphere and environment to it that I don't really think many modern films can really come toe-to-toe with. There are even little subtle things, like how the smokers call each other cousin. Adios, cousins. Insinuating that their population is massively inbred, which is somewhat amusing. But, well, I wanted to thank all of you for watching this video that no one really asked for. But, you know, it's just a theory. A water world smoking theory. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching this work nerd today. I understand there's a lot of other content creators on the internet, and I want to thank you personally for dropping by and watching this, and sticking through to the end, most of all. Uh, if you want to contact me directly, feel free to at me at historicalnerd at twitter.com. There's a website, www.historicnerd.com, that I update periodically. But, hope you have a wonderful day, evening, night, or whatever it is you're doing. Bye.